This is Craig Delger with ProLike Care, and in this video, we are going to uh, address the topic or try and answer the question, does merino wool keep you warm when wet? And this is a question that was sent in by one of our viewers. The short answer to that question is yes, as long as you don't get the merino wool shirt or fabric too wet. Uh, in this case, I've got a icebreaker merino wool shirt. It weighs, uh, let's see here, 200 grams, roughly seven ounces. And so if you exceed, um, roughly one-third or actually 35 percent of the weight of the fabric uh, with water weight uh, you are exceeding the ability of a uh, merino wool shirt to keep you warm when wet so let me dive into the details of what that is and so um, here I've got a shot glass full of water that represents roughly one-third the weight of this shirt in water and so that's actually quite a bit of water so merino wool does really a, a, an admirable job of keeping you warm uh, when it does start to absorb moisture. Um, and I've played around with this. I've uh, tried numerous different merino wool shirts and uh, saturated, uh, saturated them with moisture to varying degrees just to see if I can uh, personally experience or realize the difference between them and some of the different synthetic shirts. And I can tell you that uh, uh, if you are putting less than you know, 35% water into one of these shirts, they do feel warmer. Um, beyond that, and I can't tell a difference between a merino wool shirt and a synthetic shirt, the synthetic shirt is gonna dry faster. But uh, let's talk about how merino wool does that, how it uh, can keep you warm when wet. It does it in two ways. First of all, when the merino fiber does get wet, it becomes exothermic, meaning it can give off heat. I've tried to measure it and I just don't have sophisticated enough uh, tools or equipment here to measure the amount of heat it gives off. It is measurable if you have the right amount of, or the right equipment. It's uh, a minimal amount of heat. Um, some people have tried to say, but what about the, you know, barns that burn down because they've got a pile of wool in them and there's a hole in the roof and drops of water are dripping into that uh, pile of wool. My understanding is that's a completely different phenomenon. That is an anaerobic microbial reaction that's happening at the core of that pile of wool, generating the massive amounts of heat that allow it to combust and burn down the barn. This is a different process, and I don't fully understand it. Um, I've tried to read all the papers on it, and I don't understand what is actually happening in that merino fiber that allows it to generate heat. But like I said, it's a minimal amount of heat, and I don't think that's the primary value that the merino wool fiber has when it's wet. I think what's more important is the hygroscopic nature of the merino fiber. And if you go back to our previous videos, and I'll put links to some of those other videos at the end of this video just to make it easier to find them. Um, we talked about how the uh, individual merino fiber uh, on the exterior or the cuticle or epicuticle layer of it, it's hydrophobic and on the interior of the fiber it's hydrophilic meaning the exterior repels water the interior absorbs water so what's happening is when you introduce water to a, a shirt knit out of merino fibers the water is being carried or transported through the center of that fiber so it doesn't feel wet when it's next to skin and that's why it has a limited uh, capacity to carry that water and still remain warm while you're wearing it um, let's see here, what else can I say about that? Uh, in order to test this yourself, it's kind of interesting. If you look at those previous videos, you'll note that uh, merino wool doesn't absorb water or wick water like synthetics do. So if you try and just introduce you know, a measured amount of water to a merino shirt, it's going to come out looking kind of blotted because it just won't wick or absorb uniformly. So if you have to use water vapor, meaning steam, I use a commercial steamer you know, measure out the weight of the shirt, then start applying steam to the shirt and continuing to measure it until I've added about a third more weight to the shirt in water vapor. And that's how I'm playing around with testing these. Like I said, if you get the shirt too wet, you're going to get that moisture next to your skin and you're going to get that uh, convection cooling or evaporative cooling process going on. And it's going to be as miserable to wear as the synthetic is. So. Hopefully that uh, answered the uh, question, and uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to contact us, and uh, we'll do our best to address them. Thanks for watching our videos, and thanks for subscribing. Thanks.